There's a so-called traditionalist YouTube channel called Return to Tradition that's run by a person named Anthony Stein. It's a pretty new channel, having started in 2018, yet according to external appearances, it has already become one of the most viewed and allegedly popular, quote, traditionalist channels in the world. This channel already supposedly has over 92,000 subscribers, and if you believe the external view count, over 20 million video views. According to external appearances, he will frequently get over 10,000 views within 24 hours on religious-themed videos or simply his comments about something that happened in the Vatican II sect. He also aggressively asks for financial support, runs ads, takes special advertisers, etc. Now, until somewhat recently, we didn't know almost anything about this individual. To our knowledge, we had also never commented on him before. Yet, we discovered that he had made various false and insulting statements about us. He even falsely accused us of being grifters, which is a ridiculous and outrageous lie. Anyone can see that we put out high-quality content, argumentation, insights, and research for free and have done so for years. In fact, after watching this video, you can decide if his false statement about us was not an example of demonic projection. Stein also said that he categorically rejects anything and everything we say on anything. So he really rejects what we have to say on apologetics, against Protestantism, against Eastern quote orthodoxy, against the heresies and scandals of Francis and the Vatican II sect, on spiritual issues, etc.? I don't think so. His statement is therefore obviously a lie. It's another example of how he's dishonest, insincere, and doesn't tell the truth. Now when we saw the view counts this false trad heretic was supposedly getting on his videos, videos that are frankly boring and not high quality, we were extremely skeptical. In fact, most of his videos are just audios with a Hilaire Belloc picture and occasionally some other things mixed in. He doesn't put much time into the video aspect of the production. And how could he? He posts a new one basically every day. Yet supposedly thousands and thousands of people can't wait to watch his boring, false trad, mainly audio reports about what's happening every single day, even though a few years ago this individual was basically unknown or completely unknown to the traditional movement. We found it extremely difficult to believe. It reminded us of an individual we exposed a few years ago named Eric Gajewski, a.k.a. Tradcat Knight. Before we researched and exposed Jakuski, a.k.a. Tradcat Knight, he was also allegedly getting tens of thousands of views, and in some cases, hundreds of thousands or more than a million views on his videos. But we discovered and proved that the man is a total con artist and fraud who used click farms to generate fake view counts, fake thumbs up, and even fake comments on his videos. His viewership was almost totally fake. See the videos about him and his fraud in the description of this video. The level of his con was staggering. While engaging in this fraud, Jakuski even had the diabolical audacity, that is, demonic possession, to claim to be the most followed traditional Catholic apostolate when it was all a big lie. In fact, Tradcat Fraud, aka Jakuski, still claims to have the most followed traditional Catholic page on the internet and an Alexa traffic ranking in the top 20,000 websites in the world when it's not true at all. In fact, at the time this video is being produced, his website actually has an Alexa traffic rank of 7.3 million in the world. That's extremely low and nowhere close to what he claims. So we wondered, is Return to Tradition, that is Anthony Stein, doing something similar to what Tradcat Knight did? Is he also paying for fake views, or has he done so in the past to get himself into the YouTube algorithm? Or is he working with someone who is doing that for him? Does he use, or has he ever used, click farms or any entity or group to artificially boost his views and thumbs up on YouTube? because the numbers he's supposedly getting on a regular basis are almost impossible to believe considering the low quality of his videos, what he covers, how he was basically unknown, etc. Well, three other people we know recently wrote to him and asked him directly if he is paying for or buying views. He didn't answer any of the individuals. On his site he also says, ask me anything. Yet he didn't answer any of the individuals who asked him. Why not? We think we know why. By the way, we've never used click farms or any similar group or entity or paid for any fake views or fake thumbs up on any of our videos. Another major red flag is the fact that Anthony Stein, that is returned to tradition, on his Twitter account, guess what? On a regular basis promotes the documented con artist and fraud Tradcat Knight, Eric Gajewski, who was known for what? Buying fake views and fake thumbs up. So it's a fact that Anthony Stein is promoting fraud, at least indirectly, by promoting Tradcat Knight. Here are just some of the screenshots from March 2022, in which Anthony Stein is repeatedly retweeting Tradcat Knight and promoting his programs about every two days, if not more often. Tradcat Knight is one of the main things that Anthony Stein promotes. They're basically affiliated. So the documented con artist and fraud Erica Juski, a true grifter who paid for fake views to a staggering extent to create the false impression of popularity, to try to get into the YouTube algorithm by cheating, is basically an extension of the false traditionalist outreach of Anthony Stein, aka return to tradition. Isn't that interesting? 
Why does Stein promote Jakuski at all, and especially every few days? Moreover, Anthony Stein believes that Francis is the Pope, just a bad one, while Tridcat Fraud holds that Francis is an anti-Pope, and that Benedict XVI is the true Pope. Both of them are wrong. See our videos The Heresies of Benedict XVI and Vatican II is a New Religion. The videos demonstrate that Benedict XVI is a notorious heretic just like Francis, and therefore he also cannot be the Pope. By the way, if we debated either one of those false trads on any theological difference we have, they'd lose badly. So Anthony Stein doesn't even hold the same position as Tradcat Knight on the major issue of who the Pope is. In fact, Tradcat Knight rejects the man Stein thinks is the Pope, yet Stein promotes his programs all the time. Does that make any sense? What conclusion does that lead you to, especially when Anthony Stein has not denied buying fake views when directly asked? Perhaps because he knows that if he is doing it and lies about it, that could be used against him in court. Stein's view counts are implausible, and when one considers the poor quality of his videos, how recently he burst onto the scene, etc., it makes it almost impossible to believe that he's not buying fake views like Jakuski did. And if he is, and I'd be shocked if he's not, then it would mean that he's a diabolical fraud and con artist on the same level as Jakuski. The kind of person the devil uses to pollute the internet, waste people's time, and mislead them with false conclusions. We also have um, Justin Stamm, a uh, friend of Anthony Stein. After we exposed Tradcat fraud, his view counts dramatically decreased on YouTube. It appears that he was too embarrassed to use the click forums, at least on YouTube, to the same extent when so many people knew what he was doing. So he stopped using the click farms on YouTube, or at least stopped using them to the same level. He may still use them to some extent and perhaps on other platforms. This is a picture of some of his recent YouTube view counts. They are much lower than they were at the height of his fraud. So his cover was blown after we exposed him a few years ago, but is Anthony Stein serving as Tradcat Knight 2.0? Tradcat Knight left quite a bit of evidence on the internet by which one could prove that he was engaging in fraudulent behavior. But if he had to do it all over again, he probably would have tried to cover his tracks better. So is Anthony Stein using the same methods but with a quote clean reputation and more discreet tactics? Is he working with Tradcat Knight to artificially boost his views, get into the YouTube algorithm by cheating methods, which then gives him a certain number of real views, and in return Stein agrees to promote Tradcat Knight on a regular basis? Is that why Stein strangely retweets him and promotes his programs every few days? Is Tradcat Knight receiving some of the money that Stein gets from ads or Patreon supporters? Those are legitimate questions. A talk I just finished up with Anthony Stein from over there at Return to Tradition. He's got an up-and-coming YouTube channel. It's also noteworthy that on his Twitter profile, Anthony Stein describes himself as guilty by association. That's an interesting choice of words when one considers that Stein is associated with a known con artist and fraud who purchased fake views to create the illusion of popularity and cheat the system. Also consider that the Alexa traffic rank for Anthony Stein's website at the time we are producing this video is over 1.2 million in the world. That's not high. By comparison, the Alexa traffic rank for our website, VaticanCatholic.com, is currently about 100,000 in the world. And not that long ago, our ranking was as high as into the 70,000s. So our website is ranked over a million websites higher in terms of traffic or popularity. Our English website, VaticanCatholic.com, has also received over 10 million unique visits since June of 2014. We are the highest ranked City Vacantis site in the world and have been for about 20 years. If you combine the physical copies of our DVDs, books, videos, audios, flyers, etc., thus excluding all the internet activity, we've distributed perhaps about 2 million copies of the physical materials. We have over 49 million video views on our English YouTube channel alone, with many documentaries and videos over 50, 100,000, and some over a million. In fact, over the last 20 years, we might have distributed more DVDs than any religious community in history. We have YouTube channels in nine different languages with over 340,000 subscribers and over 100 million video views. By the grace of God, many people have converted, and people can see the research, time, etc. that has gone into the productions on so many different issues. We've also had a large mailing list for decades, and we've been producing content for over 20 years. So, those are just some of the things that go into generating a legitimately large viewership, which we have. Our videos are of much higher quality, more important, etc. than his, yet when he puts up a boring new video, which is mainly just audio, he supposedly sometimes gets two or three times the views we do in a day. Even though we recognize that there is incredible bad will out there, and we are attacked by many demonic people, and we have been massively censored by YouTube in the past few years especially. Because unlike almost any other group, we tell the full truth about conspiracies, the sodomites, etc. We find that extremely difficult to believe. Besides those questions, there is the fact that Stein engages in pathetic attempts at clickbait, which reveal a lot about his motivations and his character. People who make videos on YouTube on these matters probably know that vegano, for some reason, is a term that the YouTube algorithm really likes. 
Videos on Vigano are frequently picked up by the YouTube algorithm and recommended widely. In fact, Taylor Marshall's major rise in popularity began when he started to talk about Vigano frequently. Stein probably realized this, and in less than four years he has done a whopping 85 videos with Vigano in the title. That's astounding. We've had a channel for about 15 years, and we've done a total of one video on Vigano in English. It currently has 38,000 views. It should have many more. And we might do one or two more, we'll see. But we don't just do videos on clickbait topics, and we don't just talk about the latest scandal in the Vatican II sect, although it's important to cover some of that, as we do. Our videos cover a variety of important issues about theology, apologetics, spiritual matters, etc., typically requiring a lot of study and research. We cover those issues because they have true value and importance for souls and the defense of the true faith, even if they are not necessarily going to be the most viewed. People who really care about the faith, the true positions, apologetics, evangelization, etc., will view them. We could just stop all of that other work and do Vigano or Athanasius Schneider videos every few weeks. While that might generate more views in some cases, it wouldn't help people as much, and it wouldn't lead to as many true conversions. But Stein, whose videos in many cases do not have much value or topical variety, has done a video on Vigano about every two weeks for almost four years. So is that someone who is really looking to put out important and quality content to help souls? Or is that someone who is mainly trying to generate clicks, get into the YouTube algorithm, etc., so that he can gain ad revenue, Patreon supporters, advertisers, etc. We believe it's the latter, because people don't need to hear about Vigano every month, let alone every two weeks. In fact, many of Stein's own videos are clickbait-type videos about breaking news stories in the Vatican II sect, which amount to him basically complaining about the horrible state of the false Vatican II counterchurch, while he fails to give the proper analysis and conclusions. It's empty, and that's not a surprise because his soul is empty. He's just another example of an improperly motivated heretic who, instead of focusing on a secular job and trying to do God's will in his state of life, wants to make a living off the traditional movement and becomes an instrument of Satan. In addition to the points mentioned already, we do believe that Stein, through his various methods, has achieved some level of a real viewership, and probably a lot more of a real viewership than Jakuski ever had. He's gotten into the YouTube algorithm with many of his videos. There are some people who really watch his videos and comment on them, but the question is how much, if at all, has it been reliant on click farms and purchased views? Moreover, when people think that someone has a large audience, they will become more inclined to watch that person's videos because they think that's what so many other people are watching. That's why buying fake views or using click farms can be so insidious. It's a way that people can vault themselves or their message into prominence by cheating or dishonest means. Stein has even been interviewed and mentioned by various other groups, creating more publicity for himself, because they think he has a large viewership. But the question is, how much of it is real? And how much of the real viewership was achieved by cheating? And just like with Jakuski, asking for financial support, taking special advertisers, running ads, etc., is a major feature of what Stein does. There is a huge financial element involved in his operation. This video is brought to you by Blessed Be God Boutique, maker of Catholic fashionable apparel, handmade accessories, and more. By the way, not only have we never used click farms or purchased any fake views or fake thumbs up for any of our videos, we never willingly run ads. Some platforms or videos automatically require it and thus play ads no matter what. But if we can make a video available without doing so, we've never chosen to run ads on any of our videos, and we've never run ads on our website. In fact, one demonic liar falsely claimed that every time people click on a news story on our website, we get money. It's a total lie. We've never run ads on our site. So those are the kinds of lies evil people spread about us because the devil attacks those who put out the full truth, while real grifters and frauds run around and pollute the internet and mislead people with false traditionalism. For one sit-down meal, literally one, you can get a Track at Night subscription. I always hear people all the time telling me, I can't afford this. I can't do that. And then literally that same day, uh, they run out and they, they, they go to the movies or that day they go out and get a pedicure or that day they go out and they hit up uh, the Taco Bell and, uh, you know, four case of D is in and you could have had a track at night subscription. So quite honestly, folks, everyone else is raising their prices. I'm not raising my prices. It's going to stay 20 flat. I am now currently working seven days a week. <laughs> now that I've added the live call and radio show on Sunday, I literally have no days off like quote unquote normal people do. And I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but what I'm saying is I work very hard at what I do. I have a new policy now. People who are complaining, I just block on whatever social media outlet. Uh, I do want to say that everyone is uh, welcomed. Everyone is welcomed here at Tradcan.
you know, moving forward, I've been doing this over the last week or two, all complainers about it. I just block and I move on. I really don't even care. Um, all are welcomed uh, to the Trad Cat Night uh, outlet. Yet another reason to sign up to Trad Cat Night. We've got fresh information coming tomorrow. That one's going to be at least an hour, if not an hour and a half long. You work and then you don't expect a paycheck. I mean, listen, I'm not uh, a non-profit I'm not a uh, non-profit. <laughs> I've never said that I was. It says, well, it's another way you can support my apostolate. And I keep saying this on my promos, but for one sit-down meal at your local uh, restaurant, for one sit-down meal at even your local fast food joint or restaurant, you could pick up a Track at Night subscription. So again... Get behind the paywall with us uh, now, folks. Listen, a lot of things are going up in price. What hasn't gone up in price is the trade is track at night. So, uh, you know, Netflix going up to 16, every, you know, gas going up, oil going up, energy bills going up. But uh, track at night price has remained true $20. For, for whatever reason, some people don't want to use cards online. I guess, I mean, I guess, I, I, you know what? I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why people are like that. Um, I'm trying to think what else was going on. Oh, this upcoming week, we've got Anthony Stein. By the way, we've always heavily moderated comments on our videos. We've never allowed all comments or as many as we could because we actually care about the truth and what's being promoted on our channel. It's also noteworthy that Anthony Stein posts things about himself which reveal that he's frankly evil. Here was his profile picture in which he describes himself as the all-knowing. Now, he will probably claim that he was just joking, but it's not appropriate to joke in that way. It's sinful and blasphemous. It shows that he lacks respect for God. It's also interesting that Anthony Stein claims to have a PhD, yet he doesn't know how to pronounce the word penned, as in penned an article. He incorrectly pronounces it as pended. So today, I ask that you pray for the priest who penned this article. Anthony Stein's position on the counterchurch is also stupid and not Catholic, especially since he's had access to the true information. He admits that Francis teaches heresy in public with no shame. Francis often utters words that are, frankly, pretty heretical. He admits that Francis has publicly denied the gospel, preaches a false gospel, preaches a new gospel, etc. We know that Francis teaches a new gospel, one that departs from the gospel of Christ. Francis just publicly denied the gospel. That means that Francis is a notorious heretic, and notorious heretics cannot be inside the church or hold office in the church. Yet Stein still says Francis is the Pope. It's not a consistently Catholic position. It's a false position that contradicts Catholic teaching. It denies the church's unity of faith and the church's teaching that people who preach heresy notoriously cannot hold office in the church. See our video, Great Proof Texts for State of Vacantism. Indeed, consider how Stein contradicts the dogmatic teaching of Vatican I and in fact teaches heresy and schism against it. Stein says he is not a state of Vacantist and he repeatedly calls Francis Pope. I'm not a set of a contest. Never been one. Pope Francis has been very, very busy. Should Pope Francis take a few cues from the bishop from Kazakhstan on all of this? Yet he says that Catholics must reject Francis and that Francis and his, quote, predecessors have surrendered a lot of authority. It's naked heresy, spoken from the mouth of a man the world sees as Pope, and this is why no Catholic can accept him and must pray for his conversion. It's obvious that at the very least by uttering heretical words like this over and over and over and over again throughout his pontificate, and frankly his predecessors getting too cozy with heresy themselves, that a lot of authority was surrendered by Francis and the rest. That's a heretical position. If Francis were the Pope, then he would necessarily have to be recognized as having full and supreme power of jurisdiction over the whole church, as Vatican I taught. It anathematized those who say that a Roman pontiff does not possess full and supreme power of jurisdiction over the whole church. The only way that you can say that no Catholic can accept Francis, and that he has surrendered authority, is if he is not the Pope, which is in fact the true Sede Vacantis position. But Stein rejects that position. He calls him Pope, yet says people must reject him and that he has surrendered authority. It's not a Catholic position. It's just more proof that he's a false teacher and a heretic. Stein also promotes the fraternity of St. Peter and false bishops in the Vatican II counterchurch. He therefore holds that you can adhere to Vatican II, consider anti-Pope John Paul II to be a saint, etc., as those groups do, and be Catholic. It's another example of how he doesn't have the true faith or stand for the truth. There's a lot more we could say, but people should get the idea. Anthony Stein is a false traditionalist heretic who promotes a fraud and heresy if he's not a monumental outright fraud himself, and I'd be shocked if he's not. No one should waste their time watching his videos, and of course it would be sinful and a waste of money to support him at all. Music